Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Nels Newman from University College London. So I'm here to present our paper, Space Blender, Creating Context-Rich Collaborative Spaces Through Generative 3D Scene Blending. And this work was done during an internship at Microsoft Research in collaboration with Shweta Radharam, who also presented Blendscape earlier, as Michael mentioned, and is co-first author of this paper as well, as well as ba Bala Kumaravel, Nick Marquardt, and Andy Wilson. So current collaborative and social VR platforms provide virtual environments that are often largely independent of each user's physical surroundings, making them lack context and potentially fall short of supporting collaborative tasks that benefit from incorporating the user's physical environment. So manual env environment authoring approaches such as those seen in Meta Horizons, 3D editing suites or works such as Point Shop AR and Remixed Reality allow us users to craft environments themselves and incorporate real world elements as they wish. And while this provides fine control over the design, it also demands significant effort from the user and can be time consuming and require skill as well. So on the other hand, Recent generative approaches can produce rich and diverse virtual environments autonomously, including panoramic skyboxes, such as in text to light and LDM 3D, and mesh-based environments, such as MV, diff MV diffusion and text to room. However, these methods similarly often generate fully synthetic scenes that lack grounding in the real world uh, and do not consider VR usability criteria, such as comfortable navigation, for instance. So in this work, we set out to explore a system that autonomously creates environments with generative techniques, but also incorporates real world context of multiple distinct users for the purpose of collaboration, and secondarily aims to improve VR usability factors to, to enable usage in a VR telepresence scenario. So this exploration led to a system that we call Space Blender, a pipeline utilizing generative AI techniques to, uh, to transform user-provided 2D images into context-rich 3D environments. So we started our exploration by taking a state-of-the-art scene synthesis framework called Texture Room, which is flexible because it uses off-the-shelf 2D uh, image models. So this pipeline enables the generation of texture 3D meshes of indoor scenes from text prompts or single input images through an iterative mesh generation process which is guided by predefined camera trajectories and text prompts. However, in our early explorations, we found several large obstacles that blocked us from achieving the goals that we set earlier. So we defined an extra set of requirements. So First, Texture Room is unable to process multiple input images, which results in misalignments based on camera perspective when you're handling multiple images. Therefore, we aim to enable multiple inputs from diverse perspectives and locations. Second, the iterative generation process is similarly unable to blend together spaces due to its small context window and fixed trajectory. Therefore, we aim to enable coherent scene blending for realistic and cont context-rich spaces. Third. Texture Room requires the user to define complicated trajectory files using confusing functions, taking much trial and error, even for experts. Therefore, we aim to enable users to create blended environments without the need for extensive manual configuration. Lastly, as mentioned, the geometric structure of the output of current frameworks such as Texture Room is not really suitable for VR due to its irregularities in its geometry and visuals. As you can imagine, it'll be pretty hard to walk around in a space that is shaped like this as we see it from the outside. So these considerations led to the Space Blender pipeline, which consists of two stages. The first runs once per generation, and the second involves an iterative process. So the first stage starts with an image preprocessing step to remove any humans detected by a semantic segmentation model, after which depth estimation and back projection are used to create 3D models from input images, which we call submeshes. Following this, the submeshes are aligned to a common floor plane through a ransack based method, which fits a plane to vertices projected, uh, matching projected semantic floor labels. And if no floor is available in an Im input image, which sometimes happens, we generate a floor through a downward mesh generation trajectory using a prompt defined by a large language model that is passed an inferred image caption of the input image. Kind of asked like, okay, what's, what's below this input image? For instance, a wood floor or the rest of a couch. After alignment, submissions are arranged with a parameter-based layout technique that positions them on the perimeter of a circle. And the diameter of the circle is determined through parameter D determining the size of the blended space between each of the submeshes. The geometric prior is then defined as the convex hull of this layout, and this prior is going to uh, guide the generation as we go. 
So to generate text prompts for the iterative blending process, we utilize a large language model instructed to act as an interior architect. Given a set of descriptions of each of the submeshes, this model is asked to produce creative descriptions of the connecting spaces. Entering the second stage of the pipeline, for each step, a view of the current state of the mesh is rendered, resulting in an RGB image and a mask indicating missing regions of the mesh. Along with this, from the same viewpoint, a depth map of the geometric prior mesh that you saw earlier is rendered and used as a depth prior image. A layout prior images, uh, image is calculated based on the depth gradients to define an outline of the space. So this kind of uh, uh, notates where the walls and the floor should be, etc. So these priors are then used for the image completion step using the pre-trained control net depth model, as well as a custom trained control net layout model that guides the shape of the space without limiting generation of furniture, which the depth model would do. So just as an example, uh, what is quite interesting is that uh, by leveraging multi-control net, we can effectively regulate a parameter that controls the volume of contents within a room this way. So for instance, in this case, we might uh, have a, a high impact of the uh, depth prior, which results in an almost completely empty room. But as we uh, increase the influence of the control net layout module, uh, we'll see that more and more content will appear, uh, and, uh, and for instance, uh, a bed will. Um, so the next step, the RGB mask and prior images are then passed to an image, uh, diff uh, image and painting model, which you just saw a little preview of, combined with multi-diffusion in this case to enable completion of wide images. And what this does, it, it widens the context window that we need to actually blend these spaces together. The output is processed with the semantic segmentation model, and any depth values overlapping with the semantic labels of the floor, wall, or ceiling are overlaid with the render depth of the scene and passed to a depth and painting model. So what this means is that if our generated image matches, uh, like a pixel in this image matches the geometric prior that we have, for instance, the walls in a specific place, we simply take the depth value of the geometric prior that we have. But if not, for instance, a couch is there, we ask a depth and painting model to please complete that part. So this process continues until all empty regions between submeshes are filled. So here you can see the prior images at the bottom uh, and the mesh view at the top. Uh, initially, this is from the center. And then to fill the remaining gaps, we define custom mesh completion trajectories. These include trajectories pointing upwards and downwards, as well as trajectories that interpolate from the center point of the uh, blended space to each of the submeshes. Lastly we, we, lastly, we simulate a user looking around to, uh, to make sure that any gaps that may be visible from typical user vantage points are also filled. Um, in total, the scene generation process takes quite a while. It takes about an hour when given four input images. So we evaluated Space Blender in a preliminary within subject study where 20 participants performed a VR-based affinity diagramming task in pairs. We compared three environments to assess their suitability for VR collaboration, including impact on user comfort, navigation, and behavior. Generic 3D used simple low poly spaces inspired by basic uh, social VR platforms. Texture room was generated with unmodified source code. And finally, the, for the Space Blender condition, we generated a unique environment for each uh, pair of participants. And this was based on uh, uploaded images that they were asked to provide bef uh, ahead of the study. So in this way, each of the Space Blender environments actually incorporated parts, uh, parts of, of the real world familiar to a participant. After the participants completed the task in all these environments, um, we walked them through two other environments to show them some different scenarios that, uh, that they may imagine uh, when thinking about blended spaces, uh, similar to, uh, to Blendscape. So results. Uh, we found that most participants ranked the generic 3D environment as their first choice for completing the clustering task, followed closely by Space Blender, which notably only got first or second uh, choice ratings. And why is this? Well, we found that participants generally preferred the generic 3D environment for its simplicity and clean design, which some stated supported their task performance. However, some found it to be their least preferred due to lack of realism. And while Texture Room offered more detailed visuals and realistic landmarks with this respect, participants noted inconsistencies in floor geometry and visual artifacts that hindered usability. So complaints included stuff sticking out of the floor, excessive visual noise, 
which disrupted um, navigation, but also in some cases even uh, induced simulator sickness, which is really not what you want. Um, Space Blender, um, yeah, it was valued for its integration of familiar elements by several participants, supporting clustering strategies and offering recognizable landmarks. Participants reported smoother navigation than in Texture Room, citing the more consistent floor geometry. However, issues such as low texture resolution, incoherent furniture geometry still persisted, and uh, participants were uh, definitely, uh, yeah, definitely highlighted the need for uh, refinement with this respect. So in the post-study interviews, participants mentioned many different types of scenarios where they think blended spaces could provide explicit and implicit value. Blendscape is a great source of inspiration for this as well, of course. Explicit value in scenarios like training, where different parts of the blended space could represent distinct areas for learning activities, or implicit value, such as in social settings, where familiar details might not directly support an activity, but could directly in indirectly enhance the experience by creating a more comfortable or meaningful atmosphere. Just imagine celebrating a holiday with your family from across the world joining together your living rooms. So, in summary, we presented Space Blender, a pipeline that proposes generative AI techniques to create environments for VR telepresence by blending users' physical surroundings. We discussed early insights into the potential of familiar spaces to support VR collaboration and how generative 3D scene methods can be made more suitable for VR. We're very excited about the many future directions that could further be explored, including supporting meeting goals, real-world alignment with mixed reality, functional task spaces, etc. We're in the early stages of exploring what generative AI can do for 3D scenes and hope that some of these findings may inspire future work that incorporates the forthcoming wave of models that is coming our way. Thank you. Hi, uh, this is Bing Jian from University of Toronto. A uh, very nice talk. So I'm just wondering for your user study, were the participants located in the same physical space or were they like uh, remotely joined the same room? Yeah, so they were um, in the same building in this case, but they were in separate spaces. Yeah. yeah oh, so they're in, in the same physical spaces, like in the same room yeah, or so like, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a really great point. And I think it would have been amazing if we could have done this um, in the spaces that that were depicted in these uh, blended environments, but in this case they were, yeah, they were at our lab in this case. But uh, I yeah. see, I see. It yeah, because in your like original vision, I saw that in the VR meeting room where actually people are, you know, kind of like remotely separated in different room and they join the same virtual room. So I feel like maybe in the future work, uh, also you can maybe like describe a bit about how you plan to merge different physical space into the same virtual space that fits uh, each part of the meeting. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. We, um, yeah, we, we would love to, uh, to explore that direction further. I think it's uh, especially very interesting uh, when thinking of mixed reality, right? We can have part of the space overlaid with our real world and the rest may be virtual. Uh, the only thing is, okay, how do you, like a, a big problem there is that how do you then go to another place that you see, you may walk into a wall uh, so there's some interesting uh, uh, problems there, but uh, but yeah, that would be great, and I think it also would enable, you know, actual functional task spaces maybe combined with dynamic uh, uh, captures and mm -hmm. incorporation. So yeah, great question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, David Lindelbar, CMU. Uh, super cool work. I was wondering, can you talk about how much variability is between the different rounds of generation if I'm giving you the same input and you generate it multiple times, is the outcome always the same, or how much kind of variability is in there? Yeah, great question, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I would, would say it's about on par with what you generally see with image, uh, image generation methods. This, this uses off-the-shelf 2D image models, so uh, stable diffusion. Uh, so you can change the scene and start over and over. Um, that that does give you some pretty, yeah, very different uh, uh, results. Um, and I would say for the prompts of like the LLM, uh, the interior architect uh, is also not, yeah, it, I would say it's more consistent, uh, but still has some variability. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I hope that thank answers you. the question. Thank you. All right, let's thank Nels again. Thank you very much, Nels. And Nels. You can jump